Hey guys, DC Multiverse Dude here with a really exciting look today at the Batman Ultimate Movie Collection box set, which just came in from Fett's Hideout Toys and Collectibles. Super pumped to receive this. Um, it's been a long time coming. As most of you probably already know, this is a special release containing Batman uh, figures from each of the mainline uh, versions of theatrical Batman. Now, I know Adam West is not included, and he's technically a theatrical Batman, but we'll get to that. Um, this is sort of the main Warner Brothers 6, if you will. Uh, comes in this amazing-looking box with the sort of reflective bat single. The Warner Brothers 100 logo there on the side. Batman, the ultimate movie collection. You'll have to excuse the handheld camera work. This is a very big box, and I can't really manage to get it in frame any other way. On the back... We have this quite beautiful art of Gotham and previews of the trading cards showing the six Batman represented in this set using some very nice comic inspired art. You see, we've got Michael Keaton from Batman 89, Val Kilmer from the Schumacher Batman Forever film, George Clooney from Batman and Robin, another Schumacher. Uh, we've got Christian Bale from The Dark Knight, Ben Affleck, uh, Batman, uh, from the Justice League, although the art here seems to suggest that he's got his Batman vs Superman suit, I think, but this is actually a Justice League Batman, and we'll get to that. And there's Robert Pattinson from the Batman. You'll see that it says that it comes with three batteries for the bat signal, so that's good to know. I was wondering if I'd need my own batteries. On the other side, the WB100 logo, and a nice little note that tells us it includes six Batman figures and one bat signal. So without further ado, let's get this open. Um, I'm gonna do this really, really carefully because frankly, this is a beautiful box that I don't wanna ruin. It's a keeper. So what you do uh, is you sort of open it at the side here using these little Velcro tabs. You unseal those and the whole thing just opens up like this. And you can see there it is all laid out. The six Batman figures looking great. Let's look at them one by one in their box. You've got Michael Keaton, Batman. There he is. From Batman with the appropriate logo. Then we have Val Kilmer. Really excited to get Kilmer. One of the most underrated Batman actors in my opinion. In his Batman Forever suit, looking great. Here we have George Clooney from Batman and Robin. Not a great Batman movie, but I actually think he was really well cast. And with a better sort of better script, better material, he could have been great. Christian Bale from The Dark Knight. Not much needs to be said about him. Here we have Affleck with a great looking head sculpt, which we'll get into later. From Justice League in his Justice League suit. And finally, Robert Pattinson from the Batman. Down here, we have the trading cards. We have three lenses for this bat signal. You see there's like a really nice looking bat si signal uh, diorama display in there. It's got the Dark Knight in there, but you can switch it through for the Batman versus Superman logo, the Batman Forever and the, sorry, the Batman the Batman Forever and Batman 1989 logo. You can sort of pick whatever look you like, which I think is really, really clever. And there's the display stands. So that's it as a package. I think it's a really handsome package, really well presented. And I'm really appreciative of the way McFarlane packaged this in such a way that you can basically display it like this if you want, like, and you don't have to destroy your packaging. This is a really nice display piece for a shelf. You can leave them in here if you like, close it up when you need space. Um, yeah, just excellent packaging. So for the packaging on this set, um, I give it a 10 out of 10. Not that I rate things on individual components, but if I did, this would be a 10 out of 10 package. Like it's just, it's excellent. Um, and a step up from McFarlane's usual um, offering. So yeah, clearly he's aiming to impress with this and impress he does. It makes a great first impression. Now let's open it up and have a look at some of these figures. Okay, so that unboxing experience of 
getting the figures and all the components out of the box was actually low-key terrifying. Uh, these clamshells are really, really tight. The figures are in there really tight, so snipping all the plastic ties and pulling the figure out of these clamshells was horrible. I felt like I was going to break the figure because these are just so tight and there are so many ties and you actually can't remove these easily without damaging the packaging to get behind them. So pulling the figure out and their cape through there was really horrible. Um, so Ben Affleck and Rob Pattinson were actually much easier because unlike these, uh, this is just one big clamshell that slides out. These feel like they're attached to the packaging. So just be aware of that. These, you know, you've got to take a little bit of care getting the figures out. But anyway, let's have a look at what's inside the box. Okay, so let's have a look at the accessories that we get in this box set. These are the only accessories that come uh, with the set. It's not like you get batarangs or any sort of weapons or other things, which is fine, I think. Uh, getting the most boring uh, accessories out of the way first, you get six of these DC Multiverse display stands. You know, one little peg, the DC logo, nothing specially unique about those. So let's get them out of the way. Next, you get this set of amazing looking trading cards. Uh, these are nice, they've got that reflective finish, which I think is really, really nice. And you'll see the art is sort of comic book inspired, which is a really nice touch. This one is not accurate to the figure we get, but that's okay, we'll look at that. Yeah, so they, these are really nice for what they are. I won't go through all the bios. They are what they are. You can have a look. So they're the trading cards. This is the main accessory that we get, and it's really cool. We get this really awesome, really cool bat signal, which looks great. I mean, this is really lightweight. See, it's hollow, it comes in two parts, the top and the bottom, you just sort of connect them together. But it's got some really, really nice sort of brushing on it, some a wash, sort of a metallic wash that brings it to life, gives it some depth, makes it look metallic. Some nice sculpting on these gargoyles. A really nice design for the bat signal itself. You'll see you've got the Dark Knight logo in there. Um, yeah, light but really cool. Now you'll see it's got an on-off function. Let's have a look at that. There you go. It's not the brightest thing in the world and it, it's fairly sort of cheap uh, in terms of its construction, but in terms of looks, it actually looks really, really good. Um, doesn't give off that much light. I'm in a bright room, but uh, you know, the, that little light in there ain't doing much. And you see it also comes with three alternate logos. So if you want to do the Robert Pattinson bat signal, it's there. Ben Affleck, and Michael Keaton, and Val Kilmer, and George Clooney. I think that's meant to represent as well. So yeah, you can swap those in. I'm not gonna do it here in the interest of time, but that's a really cool feature. I think this is actually one of the best accessories McFarlane's ever thrown in to a pack like this. It's got great display potential, posing figures with it. Um, and I want to see more of this. I want to see more diorama pieces. Uh, McFarlane, you know, like that Joker interrogation room. This, uh, let's build a seven inch scale, you know, Batman world or DC world with some props. Something to pose your figures alongside. I notice it doesn't have any sort of pegs for display. So you can't really stand a figure on it, but I guess you wouldn't really want to. The idea is that you put your figure next to this. And for that, you know, in that context, I think this is awesome. Like really, really cool accessory. And um, yeah, I think it just enhances the value of the package. So here are all the figures out of their box on their display stands lined up next to each other. And in my opinion, this is a beautiful sight to behold. Um, it's a childhood dream, you know, to see these guys together sharing the same space, even if it is an action figure form. So my immediate feeling is just, wow, this is just such a cool set. Um, I think there's only one way to do this, which is to sort of just look at them as a whole, as a group, and then go one by one. I think the first thing that strikes me is that I'm actually really impressed with the variety between them, because at the end of the day, you've got a bunch of uh, similar height dudes in a black Batman outfit um, with capes. Um, but I think there is some nice variation. You know, Keaton has the beautiful sort of gold and yellow highlights. Kilmer's got his sort of blue-tinged, silvery suit, uh, which is really nice. 
Um, the Justice League, Ben Affleck, has the silver accents. Um, they've got various shades of grey. Their capes are not all the same. So you'll see that Pattinson's cape, well, I'll show you, but Pattinson's cape has a different cut than the rest. Um, there is enough variety here to make it worthwhile. And I think generally the level of authenticity is really, really good. Uh, let's go through these one by one. So starting with Michael Keaton. Now, this one, uh, this one means a lot to me because Michael Keaton is my Batman. He's the Batman that got me into Batman. So Michael Keaton, 1989, I was five years old. My mum and dad took me to see this movie. It scared the absolute living daylights out of me, um, you know, but I loved it and I've been obsessed ever since. And I still think Michael Keaton overall, one of the best Batman, and one of the best actors to ever play Batman. Uh, his Bruce Wayne was weirder, you know, not as athletic, more cerebral and broody and strange, but I loved him. Um, and so I'm actually a little bit conflicted because I don't know that this is the greatest representation of, of uh, Keaton. I think it might be the weakest likeness in the whole set, which is bizarre because I feel like the likeness in the Flash Keaton was better than this. Uh, you'll see the head sculpt. It's like respectable. The lips aren't quite Michael Keaton. The eyes aren't quite Michael Keaton. The cowl is quite good. But you'll see that one of the major things that they've lost is the, the curve, the shape of the cowl. Famously, Keaton's cowl was one big chunky neck piece. He couldn't turn his head. So why they thought they needed to give him a neck uh, head pivot like that is beyond me because it actually ruins the silhouette. You know, it ruins the profile. He didn't need it. Um, just bizarre. Like, you know, it actually looked much better on the Flash version, which I don't have anymore. I can't compare. Uh, so I really wish that they had done a better job with the cow sculpt. Like, that's just weird to me that they made that choice. The suit itself looks pretty good. Um, you'll see that the paintwork on my logo is actually really bad. Really bad. It's sloppy. Um, yeah, that's really, it's actually crushingly disappointing, to be honest, that my paintwork is bad. Obviously, your mileage may vary. It won't affect everyone the same way as it affects me, but yeah, that's a big miss. Um, You'll see there's almost like a, yeah, a blob of paint and then there's a, I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It's not good. The belt is gold, uh, looks good. The suit itself looks great in general, like the musculature looks pretty accurate. The gauntlets, the sort of spikes around the cowl look really, really good. And, you know, the cape is thin. It's that same cheap material that they're using. But, you know, I think for the budget and the price point, it's pretty good. A wide cape would have been better, but that's never on the cards. You know, we just have to accept that. So overall, Keaton figure is good, um, but the head sculpt is a little bit lacking. And I think the paint on mine is just unfortunate. You know, yeah, honestly, like the, the paint on the face is really good, but that bat symbol is just a mess, which is really upsetting for me. Um, I'm gonna have to find a way to emotionally cope with that. But yeah, overall, I think this might be one of the least uh, good figures in the set, but still pretty good. Um, yeah, and obviously if you're picking up the gold label Batmobile, uh, he'll be coming with that. So he's not really unique to this set. Um, you might prefer to get him in that set if that's or if this is the only Batman that you want. So yeah, Keaton is okay. He's pretty good. I'm glad to have him um, and he's good enough, but he could have been better. Moving on to Kilmer, and you'll see his cape has become a little bit, um, pulled back a little bit, but there you go. You see that he, the likeness on this one, I think is incredibly good. I mean, to me, that is ba that is Val Kilmer from Batman Forever. Uh, that is just him. The eyes, the lips. I think the paint on the face is really, really good. Uh, quite natural looking skin tones. The suit is that beautiful, like, blue tinge to it, which I think is really good. It's got that Batman Forever musculature. The belt. All the details faithfully represented. Um, you know, I think Kilmer is actually one of the most underrated Batman. Um, I know people generally are fond enough of Batman Forever, but I don't think Kilmer gets enough credit for his portrayal of uh, Bruce Wayne and Batman. Um, particularly Bruce Wayne. I thought he was a really soulful Bruce Wayne. Um, and I, I think, you know, the movie is a bit goofy, but I think he was bringing the gravitas. And, you know, uh, I just think, yeah, underrated and underrepresented 
and sort of a little bit forgotten about. But yeah, this is a really nice one. This is sort of, I think, the jewel because they have not released a, uh, they have not announced that he will be released in a single pack yet, like Clooney. So we'll see if that actually happens. But yeah, really, really nice. Just um, simple in terms of it's it's mostly just molded plastic with a little bit of paint to accent it. But or is that is that plastic or is that paint? You know, I think this is molded plastic but um, it actually looks so shiny and great and not too much pearling. Uh, yeah, it's really good. Uh, the cape is the same as the uh, Keaton one in this instance, but that's fine. It was in the movie too, largely. But yeah, this is a winner. Val Kilmer, Batman Forever. I like it. Now here we come to George. Now, <laughs> you know, we've all been talking about George Clooney Batman recently because of the ending of, well, another movie that I'm not going to name, but we've been talking about him, uh, reappraising him. I think George Clooney is actually a really good casting as Bruce Wayne and Batman, but it was the wrong casting for the wrong movie. You know, like, I don't think anyone could have salvaged sort of that... <laughs> that corny mess that was Batman and Robin, or maybe it would have worked if someone was more in on the joke. Clooney was there to play Batman and he was sort of stuck in this sort of riff on the Adam West cartoon. Um, but in live action, it was, you know, it's, it's a mess and we know it. Um, but I think Clooney, given the right material, could actually be an excellent Bruce Wayne and Batman. And I, I maintain that to this day. Uh, you know, James Gunn, if you want to cast him as Daddy Batman, um, I'd be all for it. Anyway, this figure looks pretty good. Uh, he's not as shiny and pearlescent as Kilmer, but that's accurate. His suit is probably the least sort of detailed. Like, it's got a great sculpt. It's got the bat symbols on the boots. It's got the right musculature, the right bat symbol on the uh, belt and the, and the chest. But it is extremely simple. Like, it's all the same colour plastic. Um, it does have those great little bat clasps on the cowl, which is an excellent detail. Um... It's just a more boring design, I guess. And I feel like there was the the suit from the end of Batman and Robin with all the silver accents might have been a cooler choice for this. It might have given this a bit more life. But they went for the suit from the beginning. It's fine. You know, he looks good. Um, I think the head sculpt is largely successful. Looks like George Clooney to me. The eyes and the lips, really, really good likeness. The ears are really pointy. Um, and I should say the ears on all of these are really pointy. None of those little balls on the top like you saw with the Flash version. So that's really nice. The ears look great. Um, you know, is this as good a version of George Clooney Batman as we could get? Almost. It's almost as good as you could expect. I think the other suit with the, the silver highlighting, I don't know what it's called. Uh, let me know in the comments what that suit variant is called. That would have looked more interesting. But like for a basic Batman and Robin Batman, like he looks great. Um, a winner, right? If you want a George Clooney Batman, you can't go wrong. Uh, he'll be coming out in the four-pack, uh, Build-A-Figure Wave with Poison Ivy and uh, Batgirl and Robin with the Mr. Freeze Build-A-Figure. So if you want this guy and only this guy, you can get him um, in that wave coming up later this year. Here we have Christian Bale, The Dark Knight. Now, you'll see this is sort of very similar to the figure we got in the Dark Knight Build-A-Figure Wave recently. Um, except you'll immediately notice, and I don't have that figure, so I can't compare, but I do know that they sort of inverted the colors on the suit. So the gray is black and the black is gray. So where the other one was predominantly gray, sorry, black with some gray highlights, this is predominantly gray with some black highlights. And I don't know how I feel about that. Um, I don't know that this is all that accurate looking. The gray is a little bit light, lighter than we saw in the movie. Um, yeah, this kind of makes him just look very gray which is not what I think of. When I think of Christian Bale's Batman, I think of black, you know, or very, very dark gray, but mostly black, right? So I don't know about that. The belt looks fantastic. Um, but generally the Christian Bale, like, outfit, it doesn't really do it for me. The Dark Knight look never did it for me. I actually think the Batman Begins suit is way superior. It's got a better, like, profile. This has got more like a military look and it's got this sort of helmeted look, which kind of makes him look like he's got a lollipop head. Not my favorite design. I think this is a decent representation of that design though. Like the head sculpt is largely pretty good, but I don't know, like that little cutout for the jaw, which is very faithful to the design, just looks a bit derpy to me. 
no, no, this Batman looks derpy. Do you think he looks derpy? I think he looks derpy. From certain angles, he looks sort of better. Like if you sort of tilt his head down, he looks better. But if you look at him dead on, he just looks really dopey to me. But like, hey, um, I think this is actually better than the Builder figure version because of the cape. I really like the cloth cape. Um, so look, not my favorite, um, probably my least favorite. I think I like Keaton much more than this because I like the design more, but it's like, it's good. Like it's not bad. I'm just nitpicking. I just wish this was mostly black uh, with, the, with the dark gray rather than the gray with black. I, I, they probably did it just to differentiate him from that first release, give collectors another reason to pick this up and to differentiate him from the other Batman within this set. But yeah, Dark Knight, Christian Bale, uh, he's good, but not like transcendent. Now, Justice League Batman. You'll see he's got a unique cape, first thing to note. Second thing to note is this head sculpt. Best Ben Affleck head sculpt that we've got so far. Better than all the Justice League versions, 10 times, a million times better than the Flash head sculpt. This tells me that they did not get Ben Affleck's rights, uh, likeness rights for the Flash merchandise, but they certainly have his uh, rightness, right, uh, likeness rights for Justice League, because this is perfect. I mean, that is just, look at that chin, that butt chin is Affleck, the lips, the eyes, it's perfect. Absolutely impeccable. I love it. Um, the body looks to me identical to the single release that we had from Justice League. Let me know in the comments if you see any differences. I don't have that figure anymore and I never took him out of the box. So I'm not intimately familiar with him, but this looks like that Justice League Batman again, which is no bad thing because it's a decent sculpt. It's got lots of variation in the color, the silver gauntlets. Um, not one of my favorite designs. This should have been the Batman versus Superman design, which I think was Affleck's best. Um, in my opinion, but like, if we can't get that for whatever reason, and they're just going to reuse this, it's it's a good, it's a decent reuse because it was a it was a good looking figure in the first place, and it remains a good looking figure. And I just think I think where they've really made this worthwhile is that head sculpt. It's perfect. Looks like Ben Affleck. Yeah. So I think Affleck's actually a really good Batman. Again, it's it's a shame he never got better material. Um, because for his few scenes that he did have throughout the DCEU, I thought he was really good. Uh, particularly in Batman vs Superman, in the action scenes, I thought he was excellent. Um, despite my issues with his characterization in those movies, I think he, with the material he was given, was really, really good. Um, just never quite got to live up to his potential, in my opinion. But yeah, a good figure. That head sculpt is immaculate. <laughs> Something's happened to our Pats. Sorry, our pats. Now, here we go. This one is probably the most sort of uninteresting of the lot because we got this figure at the beginning of 2021, was it? Uh, very, very similar. I think the head sculpt is different. I think the head sculpt might have better eyes. They're not a side eye. Yeah, they're looking a little bit more front on. There's some slight side eye, but it's very subtle. And I think it looks way, way better. The suit itself, I think, has a little bit of airbrushing or dry brushing on it which I think looks really nice. Uh, so I think there is subtle variation in the paint job, actually. But by and large, this is the same figure. With new fisted hands. His boots look really good. And I, re I really like the shade of gray that they picked for him. It stands out nicely against the black. I wish Christian Bale Batman sort of was a bit more like this with a bit of a wash or to, so he doesn't look like a big gray slab. But yeah, this is actually really, really nice. You'll see he's got a unique cape. It's a bit flatter, less pointy than some of the other ones, which is quite accurate, I guess. Um, it sits quite nicely over his shoulders. Yeah, this is this is a handsome figure. Like it's it's a good look, and I quite like this design. Like I, I like the patterns and design. Um, it's militaristic, but I think that sort of hand stitched cow looks really great. And I love how I love the profile of the jawline. I just think it looks really good. Um, so yeah, this is a good. A good figure. We've seen it kind of before. Uh, if you haven't got that original release, you know, this is the one to get, I think. Um, so yeah, if I had to rank these from, you know, one to 10, one to 10, what am I talking about? One to six, best to worst. I would say my favorites are, I think we've got Kilmer, number one, maybe, hmm. Pattinson, number two, Affleck, number three, Clooney, number four, 
Keaton number five and Bale number six. Um, although, you know, I'm already changing my mind as I say that. I think they're all good, right? Um, and I think in terms of like the design, like this is clearly the one that speaks to me the most. Like this is the one that I see it and I say, it's Batman, that's Batman to me. Um, but I think the execution of this one, there are some real head scratches. Yeah, um, so like minor disappointment, but uh, still excellent. I'm still gonna be proud to display all of these. Um, and I'm proud to have the set. I'm just, I'm so happy to have them all together. Uh, they look excellent in the right scale with the same cloth capes, so uniform, Mwah, love it. Yeah, so look, if you are on the fence uh, about getting this set, um, if you can still get it, uh, I say get it before it goes absolutely crazy on the aftermarket and you never see it again. Um, it's, it's a winner. Um, I think its value is only going to go up. Even if they release these figures individually, they're going to be slightly different, different head sculpts, different paint jobs, and the value is in having them all together with that bat signal. Um, get it if you can get it. And if you've already got it, I think you're really going to love it. Um, that's all I've really got to say. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button, leave me a comment, let me know which Batman you like the best. And who was your Batman growing up? Um, I sort of want to know the age demographic of my subscribers like and viewers. Um, are you Keaton heads like me or are you sort of, you know, Affleck heads uh, of the last, you know, 10, 15 years? So let me know. Um, subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, uh, happy collecting and thank you for watching. This video was brought to you with the support of Fett's Hideout Toys and Collectibles. For a great range of toys from DC Multiverse to Black Series to Marvel Legends, Hot Toys and more, uh, visit Fett's Hideout Toys and Collectibles and use the offer code DCDUDE. That's DCDUDE uh, for an exclusive discount month to month. Could be 5% off or $5 off at checkout. Try the code, see what you get, place an order with Fett's and you won't be disappointed. And we thank Fett's for their continued support of this channel.